want to find out more about how GitHub Actions work and some of the Azure Actions that you might use in your first deployments to the platform, then stick around because this video is the one for you. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and we'll be talking about all things cloud. So we'll be building upon the uh, last episode in the series that we uh, did talking about Git and GitHub and how the two kind of link together and just uh, pushing up some source control, some code up to a Git repository. So we'll carry on moving very swiftly through here as we start looking at some of the GitHub actions which are available for Azure and how we might start using them in uh, these kind of GitHub action workflows. So let's go ahead and jump across to our screen. And you can once again see that we've got uh, Visual Studio Code running here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead where we left off last time and bring across the Azure Actions GitHub repo. So github.com slash Azure slash Actions. And as a bit of a recap, uh, we have a Git repository on our local machine, uh, and we've pushed up the code from that local repository to a repository that also exists in GitHub. And this is the difference between Git and GitHub, that Git is the overall version control kind of approach or system like TFVC, SVN, or some other ones that you may have heard of. And then GitHub is a place where you can host those Git repositories, just like Azure DevOps or GitLab or Bitbucket or any other uh, kind of Git hosting options you may have heard of in the past. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at how these actions work and uh, really what's going on here. So let's just start off with this Azure login action for a moment here. And we'd come into this Azure login action and you'll notice that once I've clicked on that link, it's just taken us to another repository. And that's the magic behind GitHub Actions is that all of these actions are just repositories. Some of them are public, so they've been kind of published to the world and are available for you to go and use. There may be some which are private and internally in an organization you might use as well. But if we scroll down here, you can find this example of a GitHub Action Workflow file. Now this GitHub Action Workflow file is not something specific to the Azure GitHub Actions. This is the kind of general standards that you might go and use. So if we just navigate back over to our um, to our own repository here and just go and create a file, uh, I'm going to create it in a specific place called .github slash workflows. Um, and we're going to just call it something like a uh, example.yaml. Oops, .yaml, for example. And I'm not going to commit anything in there. I'm just going to create it as a new file for now. And once I go ahead and edit this file, you'll see that there's a different editing experience to what you may expect with some of the other files on GitHub. So if I just go and edit this startup.cs, for example, you'll see it's just a kind of a plain text editor there. Whereas the experience that we get back with our GitHub workflows file, because it's in this special folder, is we get this kind of uh, UI driven experience here. Uh, and this is where you have to store your GitHub workflow files, by the way. Uh, so what you can see in this GitHub repository for the github.com slash Azure slash login uh, repository, so that's the Azure login action, uh, are just some examples about how to go and run using the uh, Azure login step and then use the Azure CLI. So as you've probably guessed, what this step or this action really is here for is to authenticate against Azure and to do some kind of uh, step to go and uh, uh, provide the credentials that the task runner needs for running those steps in our GitHub workflow file. So ju let's just backtrack a moment because I mentioned about this thing called a task runner. If you've come from uh, you know, the land of Azure DevOps, you'll be familiar with agents. And uh, sometimes I refer to them as task runners, to be honest. And it's the same kind of concept with GitHub that 
this task runner is really just there to execute a series of steps or a series of tasks. Uh, and that's exactly what we are defining in this workflow file right here. So as an example, the one on screen right now is saying on a push to this repository, then this Azure login sample is going to run uh, and it's going to run a job called build and deploy. Uh, it's going to run on an Ubuntu image and the steps for that particular uh, workflow are to go ahead and run using this uh, Azure login step with these particular credentials and then run this particular command line script. So let's break that down a little bit more. Uh, it's going to go ahead and run this Ubuntu latest uh, series of agents, for example, or task runners. And uh, these are just ones which are hosted by GitHub themselves. Uh, we could go ahead and run our own self-hosted runners, ones that are on my machine or some machines that I have in my own cloud environment, for example. But these are the ones which are hosted by GitHub and are publicly available for anyone to go and use. Now, notice this particular interesting thing here about this uses step. It's the Azure slash login at v1. Now, there's a particular interesting thing about this syntax. Uh, notice that when we jump back, sorry, to the Azure slash login uh, repository here, that's what we're referring to is the name of the repository that we're talking about. And then the at v1 is the release version of the code that we want to go and use. So what you'll find is as we jump across to the right hand side, oops, let me not go ahead and do that. Let me go and open in a private window just so my Microsoft uh, credentials and authentication doesn't have to uh, jump in there. You can see that as we scroll down, uh, we have a V1 of that particular task. So this task is basically mapping back to a certain version of the code base, a certain git release of the uh, code base is really what we're referring to there. So that's really the magic behind GitHub Actions is we're always going to be referring to some kind of uh, version of the uh, repository that we're talking about there. And then with creds, we're talking about the fact that we have some kind of secrets that are stored against our GitHub repository. And uh, we need to go, obviously, and log in uh, using those credentials. So they need to be stored in a safe way there. And then this next step is just a command line script. So it's going to run the uh, Azure CLI and list any uh, uh, web apps that are running, for example, for us. We might change that, but uh, we'll go ahead and use this as uh, an example here. So we'll go and copy that across into our uh, own example YAML file here, and we'll call this the uh, my.net project sample. Uh, instead of build and deploy, we'll call it um, execute sample, something like that. Let's get rid of the dash for now as well. Uh, and we've got in here this uh, Azure login app v1, and we've got these Azure credentials as well. So I'm just going to change this as well and call this... Um, my.net project underscore credentials. Now I'm going to keep that uh, somewhere on the side because I have the memory of a goldfish and no doubt I will go ahead and uh, and forget that. So I'm just going to move that across to the other screen here. And what we could go and do is we could go and uh, uh, run some other kind of command. So we might do az group list to list all of the resource groups that are in my environment there. Oh. Okay. Okay, so at this point then, what we can do if we jump back to this Azure slash login step uh, or this repository is we can go ahead and take a look uh, at the commands that we need to go and generate these credentials because we mentioned in this uh, workflow file that we're referencing some kind of credentials, but is it a password? Is it a username? What actually is that? Well, what you'll find is... Actually, there's a command in the Azure CLI, uh, this azadsp, create for RBAC command. Bit of a mouthful, I know. Um, but effectively, what we're saying is, let's go ahead and uh, create this kind of role, uh, this service principle, where I can go ahead, generate uh, this information that I'm looking for, uh, and then it will output from there... Uh, effectively the JSON and all of the bits and pieces that I need, as you can see on the screen here. Um, so that JSON output is what we then go ahead and uh, 
put in our repository secrets there. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this workflow file for now. And we'll commit that directly to master. Uh, not really a good practice. We should be doing some kind of branching strategy. Uh, but you can see here now that has created and no event triggers defined in on is what it's saying. Um, I think that's just because we've saved it the first time, but we'll obviously take a look in a moment and see how we get on. Um, now, so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and generate, of course, those uh, those credentials that we need. Okay, so I just temporarily paused the recording just to make sure I was logged in with the right credentials before we move forward. So um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and just grant uh, contributor access, for example, uh, across my subscription. So if I just come in here to a notepad and edit uh, a couple of things. So I'm going to call this um, my .NET project uh, service principle. Uh, we're going to grant it contributor and we need the subscription ID, which I do have. Um, bear with me whilst I grab that here. There we go. That's that one, and we're not going to give it anything else. We'll just grant it that level of scope. So what I can then do is if I just come into my terminal, I can run that command. And what you'll see is, of course, the, uh, the credentials generated. There we go. Now, don't you worry. By the time I've uh, <laughs> uploaded this video, that will be uh, deleted, so uh, you won't be able to get in there. But I just want to make sure you see the end to end. Um, so now, if I jump across back to my .NET project, uh, look at my settings, go into my secrets, this is where I can go ahead and create the secrets that are used in the GitHub Actions workflow. So if I create this new repository secret, paste in that uh, that client ID, client secrets, etc., all of that JSON, and then I just give it the same name that I mentioned uh, I would forget because I have, uh, you can see here that now that's how I create the secret. So what I could do, just as an example, is I could go ahead and create a dummy kind of update um, just to signify us pushing to the repository. Better yet, let's do that locally. Because, of course, we've made some changes on GitHub, but those changes are not yet on my local machine. So to do that in VS Code, and you can see already it's, it's identified there's been a couple of uh, changes to the repository, I can just go ahead and pull those down. And then what we see is this uh, example.yaml has changed here. So I might come into my program, for example, and put in some kind of code to say, you know, uh, new feature implementation, let's say. Uh, so we go ahead, enter our new feature implementation, add that uh, or stage that change ready to be committed locally make those changes or commit those changes to our local repository and then we need to go ahead and push those changes to our remote location. Now remember that our trigger was on push so we would expect to see as is already happening here some kind of uh, workflow being triggered. So what we will then start seeing as we've navigated to the GitHub Actions view in our repository is a live output of all the commands and everything that's running on that uh, runner that is running somewhere uh, hosted by GitHub that is going to be running and uh, executing the tasks that I configured in that YAML file. So we can see that it's now using that Azure login step and then it will go ahead and list out the uh, resource groups that are in my subscription. And we can see that that all worked well because there were no failures unlike before. So if I 
expands this section here uh it looks like uh, i think one of my uh one of my extensions is actually blocking uh from showing the output there but if i look at the ah no there we go it was just a bit slow to load um you can see here for example all of the different properties and the different sections there and of course some of those outputs are being uh, obfuscated by uh by my extension uh, but that's okay uh, but you can see for example uh my blog where that's hosted uh you know my resource group for my podcast itself is uh hosted in that subscription as well um uh, so you can see, for example, how we've gone ahead, logged in and listed out the groups. Now, of course, that's just a very trivial example, but that gives you the idea of if we can script it, we can effectively go and do it. So uh, Azure CLI is one approach that we've just shown. Azure PowerShell could be another approach. And you can see here, if we want to log in with the Azure PowerShell, uh, we just need to add another property onto the Azure login workflow step there that we've been using. And then we can just go ahead and uh, use our Azure PowerShell then as well. Okay, so just as a quick recap, uh, looking at the previous push that happened, you will see that in our workflow step, uh, we did get a failure because it was unable to uh, find the credentials that we passed in as well. So uh, you can see that the credentials that we pushed in uh, uh, and generated on the command line are working as expected. Now, one final thing worth calling out is that not all of the Azure uh, GitHub actions that are available need to use this Azure login task. Uh, for example, a bit later, we'll probably look at things like the Azure Web Apps task, uh, which I know for sure doesn't use the uh, login task. Uh, you know, there's a Docker login task, so you can work with container registries, for example. So depending upon the workflow that you're trying to orchestrate really determines which GitHub actions you really need to go and use. But just wanted to show this initial simple example of using the Azure login step with some Azure CLI uh, task running there as well. So that in a nutshell is an initial glance at using GitHub Actions and deploying uh, or really just interacting with Azure really at this point. We haven't deployed anything yet. So what we'll start looking at next is maybe some ARM templates, getting those into our source control repository and then deploying onto a resource group of some kind, uh, not a, into a resource group of some kind, I should say, and deploying onto Azure App Service. So stay tuned for the next episode where we'll dig into that in a little bit more. Bye for now.